Greetings! Today we're going to look at a swamped common emitter amplifier. Swamping, also known as emitter degeneration, has three effects on the amplifier. First, it reduces distortion. Very good thing. Secondly, it increases the input impedance. Third, it decreases the gain. That's not so good, but if we already have more gain than we need, that's a pretty good trade-off. So the big thing here really is uh, we're doing it because of the reduction in distortion. Where does the distortion come from to begin with? Well, it all has to do with the nonlinear nature of our prime E. Now, if we did a little plot of the emitter diode, so here's our VBE and the emitter or collector current, and we have a curve that looks something like this. Now, we bias this at some point, let's just say right here. The R prime E is essentially uh, the slope of a line tangent to this point, right? So we'll just say it's like so. And that little R prime E, as we've seen in the text, helps us determine what the gain is. The smaller the R prime E is, the bigger the gain is. Now, as the AC signal is swinging back and forth, right, this point is changing. So at a increase in input current, that operation point is going to be up there, and this slope is going to be a little bit steeper. What that means is we're going to have a smaller value for our prime E, and the gain is going to go up. On the other hand, when the signal swings negatively, the operating point will be there for a moment, and the new slope will be something like this. End result, bigger R prime E, smaller gain. So parts of the signal are getting more gain, other parts of the signal are getting less gain that distorts the shape of the waveform. So how do we get around this? Well, the basic way of getting around this is to degenerate the emitter, and what that means is we're going to add some resistance in the emitter. So the general equation for our voltage gain, right, our amplification factor, is a negative RC, which is the AC collector resistance, plus got the R prime E and an R E value in the uh, denominator. Now it's this R E which is referred to as a swapping resistor. And the bigger this is, the bigger R E is compared to R prime E, the greater the effect on distortion, but also the greater the effect on gain. So we're going to see a, a, a nice sort of one-to-one -one trade off here, nearly. In other words, if we are willing to cut the gain in half, we'll also wind up cutting the uh, distortion in half. So, you know, the more we give up, the more we get. It's kind of a way of looking at it. So let's consider a simple amplifier here, right? We'll start off with a little AC source. Now I'm going to use a uh, two-supply emitter bias on this circuit. And of course the first thing we're going to have to do is determine the DC operating point because we're going to want to find out where our R prime E is. So I'm going to load out here. Now the emitter, instead of just having one resistor and a bypass capacitor, we're going to split that into two values. All right, so we've got two resistors here and partway through we will have our typical bypass capacitor. All right, Put some numbers in here. Let's say this is uh, 15K. Uh, power supplies will say are plus 15 and minus 5. The resistors in the emitter will make a 1.8 for the swapping resistor, 1.8K, and an 8.2K for the remaining resistance. Now off on the collector, biasing resistor will be 22K, and the load resistor will be 33K. All right, so a DC analysis, if we were to just use the approximation technique, and certainly this looks like we could, the total DC resistance here, remember you're going to open up your capacitors, total re uh, DC resistance here is going to be 8.2K plus 1.8K, which is going to give us 10K ohms, right? And our rule of thumb is um, as long as this resistor in the base is around the same size or certainly smaller, than the DC emitter uh, biasing resistor, then we can use our approximation. The DC approximation is that we would have about zero volts DC at the base. In fact, it's slightly negative. That would put us at about 
minus 0.7 volts DC at the emitter, which means we're going to have 4.3 volts dropping across to this pair of resistors, the emitter resistors, for DC. Um, the DC sum of these, 8.2K plus 1.8K, is 10K, as we said. So the emitter current will simply be that voltage, the minus 0.7 to the minus 5, 4.3 volts, divided by that total resistance, so 8.2 plus 1.8 or 10K. All right? So that's going to give us 0.43 milliamps. And from that, we can calculate the R prime E. All right, so we determine that R prime E is equal to 26 millivolts over IE. So I just put 0.43 milliamps in there, and this will work out to 60.5 ohms. All right. Okay. Now, we consider, let's for a moment just ignore the fact that we have swamping. Okay, if we had no swamping, do a little comparison here. We would look at the gain, which is RC. Now, our RC value over here is going to be 22K in parallel with 33K. All right, and that's going to equal 13.2K. All right, so my gain over here would be a negative RC 13.2K divided by the R prime E of 60.5 ohms. All right? So this is what we're going to see. Essentially, if you just picked up this capacitor and just moved it from this juncture to this point, right, it would completely bypass um, both of these resistors, and your emitter would be at AC ground. All right? Your swapping resistance effectively would be zero. So when we divide this out, we get a gain of negative 218.2. In other words, whatever input signal we have will be 218 times larger out here at the 33K at our load. Right? Put in one millivolt, we're going to get 218 millivolts out here. Of course, the minus sign indicates that it's inverted. Positive sign here is going to give us a negative sign out there. All right? Put in 10 millivolts, you know, we're going to get 10 times that. In other words, uh, a little over uh, 2 volts, right? 2.182 uh, 2 theoretically. All right. If you actually look at this on the scope with a larger signal, you're going to see that the waveform is going to be distorted. It's not going to be a nice sine wave. You're going to see part of it sort of squished and part of it elongated. In fact, um, you will wind up seeing something that kind of looks like this. You're going to get a sort of a nice sine wave. We'll just pretend that's a nice sine wave. Um, part of it's going to get squished and part of it's going to get elongated. All right, so this section doesn't have as much gain. This section has more gain, excess gain. Now, it might look like all I've done is just shifted this waveform down, but I haven't. In fact, if you, if you look at this carefully, right, that's your 50% point as far as time. And if you did try to just shift the original waveform down, you know, it would, it would not appear correct. The, um, this part of the waveform, right, if you brought it over here, your... Um, your, your zero time cut there, if you will, wouldn't match up correctly. So you really do see a flattening on this side and a pointing on this side, okay? Obviously, we don't like that. Very rarely do we want things to distort, right? So, you know, rock and roll guitar is probably the only time you really want a bad distortion on an amplifier because you can make lots of money doing that, right, if you know how to do it right. In any case, Continuing, let's take a look at what happens through the use of swapping. So now we're going to use the general formula with the value of RE. In this case, the voltage gain is going to be the same value, 13.2K ohms, divided by the R prime E, 60.5, plus the swapping resistor. So we now have this 1.8K in there. It's not bypassed. The emitter is not at AC ground. So I have to throw in this 1.8K, right? Now, you can see what's happening here, right? This denominator is much, much larger than it used to be, and the gain is going to go, you know, way down, right? As a matter of fact, our gain is just a little bit over 7. It's about 7.1. So, you know, if we put in the 10 millivolts that we did originally, um, hoping to get over 2 volts out, well, now 10 millivolts times a gain of 7, we're only going to be looking at, you know, 71 millivolts. 
So the signal is drastically reduced. However, this sort of squishing and elongating of the waveform will be reduced by a similar amount, right? I mean, this change from the original 218 down to 7, right? You know, you're looking at about a 30-fold decrease in gain. And in fact, that distortion is going to go also down by a factor of about 30. Okay, it's a similar sort of ratio. So that's a good thing. Now, if you're wondering, well, gee, I, I need to get some more gain. How am I going to do that? You know, 7 isn't enough. Well, we can always run this into a second stage. In other words, another amplifier stage um, that has a comparable gain. You know, if it has a gain of uh, 7 or 10 or 15 or something like that. In other words, another swamped amplifier. Those two gains will multiply and we'll actually be able to get a pretty good size gain. You'll be able to get a gain in the hundreds, just as we had originally. But both of those stages will be low distortion and the overall distortion will be very low. Right? Now the other thing that we mentioned was the, the effect on the input impedance. Okay, So we've seen gain, um, at least mathematically we've seen the effect of distortion. Um, but what about the input impedance? So the general formula for input impedance, Zn, is two parts, right? We've got a biasing resistor on the front end, maybe more than one. You know, if this was a voltage divider, for example, we would have two resistors out here. Um, they would wind up in parallel for the AC case because our power supply would be an AC ground. Uh, in this case, we just have the one. We have 15K. And that's going to be in parallel with whatever the impedance is looking into the base of the amplifier, right? So that value, Z in base, is equal to the beta of the transistor times the quantity R prime E plus R E. In other words, the R prime E plus the swamping resistor. So you can see what's happening in this, in this formula. As we increase the amount of swamping, in other words, as the RE gets bigger and bigger and bigger, um, this whole quantity gets larger and our Z in base increases appropriately. Now that is, of course, in parallel with RB, and RB might be the limiting factor here. Um, end result, you know, if we were to sacrifice, let's say, a factor of 30 on the gain, our input impedance will go up, but it probably won't go up by a factor of 30. It will, however, increase. All right. Uh, in this particular case, you know, what is our Z in base? Well, if we were to assume a beta of, yeah, what's a good beta? 150, right? For a transistor like this. Take 150, the R prime E is 60.5. The swapping resistor is 1.8K. All right. Uh, so we multiply this out, and the Z in base is going to work out to 279K ohms. So the Z in is going to wind up being this 15K in parallel with this 279. Now clearly the RB is the dominant factor here, right? This is going to wind up being just a little bit less than 15K, right? 14.2K. Now, if we didn't swamp this, the Z in base would have just been 150 times 60 ohms, right? So, you know, you're looking at somewhere in the vicinity of 9K. And we would put that 9K in, in parallel with the 15K, and, you know, we'd be looking at maybe half this value, all right? So in this particular case, we don't see as dramatic a change in the input impedance because of uh, this RB value. You know, if we had used a larger R, uh, RB value here, um, the effect would have been more dramatic. But nonetheless, we can see what's going on, right? We are getting an increase in input impedance. Um, clearly, there's a loss, a, a reduction in gain. Um, it still is inverting, however. And the reduction in distortion is manifest. Okay, there you have it.